Hello my dear friends, you're in the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 24th of March of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first let's talk about Belgorod. Uh, the Russian sources reported that at on the March of 23, so yesterday in the evening at 11 uh, p.m. of the local time, uh, Ukrainians made another attempt uh, to attack to carry out a terrorist attack on the targets on the territory of Russian Federation using uh, an RM-70 Vampire multiple launch rocket system and 19 missiles were destroyed uh, by duty air defense systems over Belgorod region so and uh, those attacks took place yesterday in the evening and the uh, previous night and today the Russians reported that uh, today at 5 almost at 6 p.m. of the local time uh, the Ukrainians made another attempt to attack Belgorod using the multiple launch rocket systems vampires and uh, today uh, at 7 p.m. the Russians managed to bring down 22 missiles of this uh, type of weapon so around 40 missiles just during the previous 24 hours and very likely that was not the last attempt from the Ukrainian side probably they will continue doing this more and more and the most important is that Ukrainians as you can see are using not just like Grad multiple launch rocket systems or let's say old Soviet types or let's say Ukrainian types the Ukrainians are using the Western uh, multiple launch rocket system by the name of Vampire and you know that when you use this type of weapon uh, First of all, uh, if you're using this type of weapon on the line of combat contact, it's okay, it's normal, it's a war. But if you use this territory, this multiple launch rocket system on the territory of Russian Federation, let's say old Russian Federation, that means that you can receive you can do this only if uh, this action uh, was approved by production by the country of production and uh, the let's say authorities of the country that sell this uh, that sold um, sold this multiple launch rocket system to Ukraine, and we know that uh, and that means that very likely the Ukrainians received let's say the approval from uh, Czech Republic uh, to use this, and of course this is not very good step uh, from this country. And the reason why the Ukrainians are so focused in Belgorod is simple. Uh, during the previous days, the Russians did significant damage to uh, Kharkiv and the Russians destroyed, uh, let's say, almost the, let's say, brought down uh, the energy facility and energy infrastructure in Kharkiv till zero. And uh, pro it's around three or four days left since those attacks and still the Ukrainians haven't managed to restore uh, the electricity, the electricity supply. So uh, what, so according to the governor, mayor of Kharkiv, if water supply was restored in almost all houses, heating was restored in approximately 60% of houses and electricity was restored just in 40% in of houses. So this situation made Ukrainian uh, Zelensky very mad. So that's why he is attacking Belgorod, the civilians, uh, all, all, we can say non-stop um, mode. And now we're moving to the southern part. Uh, after the attack on Belgorod, the Ukrainians made another attempt to attack Crimea with a significant number of Su-24. We have already discussed the situation. The only thing that I would like to discuss with you is it, that uh, some Ukrainian sources after that attack start um, claiming that they managed to uh, destroy two Russian uh, big marine uh, boats, uh, ships, uh, Yamal and Azov. But uh, since till the, uh, let's say, 7 p.m. of the local time, uh, the Ukrainians still haven't managed to provide any evidence, reliable evidence that they managed to do this. So very likely the Ukrainians managed to destroy or damage something but not the ships. And a few more details we received uh, about the Russian missile strike in the western part of Ukraine. If you remember, we were talking that uh, very likely, and according to, let's say, the first data we received, the Russians were trying to hit and destroy the airfield in the village by the name of Stry in the western part of Ukraine that Ukrainians and the western countries were using to, uh, to uh, let's say, for f future use of F-16s. So the Russians probably were trying to destroy the infrastructure and so on. But later we got more details about that attack. Uh, first we got uh, some analysis, first analysis uh, that uh, according to information we have uh, that in 14 kilometers from three military airfield there is a largest gas storage facility in Ukraine. The Bilchevalitska Unerska underground gas storage facility. And this facility can store four times more 
more natural gas inside than Germany's largest storage facility. The largest storage facility in Ukraine with a design capacity of 17.5 billion or 5 billion uh, cubic meters. And uh, this uh, gas storage, uh, this is the gas storage, this is it. And uh, later we got more details about the attacks that the Russians conducted. The Russians are saying that there were at least 20 explosions, uh, 20 explosions were heard in the vicinity of the uh, Strisky district. In addition, the Russian airspace forces carried out a control strike on the facility with Kinjal missiles. So as you remember, there were two attacks. So according to information we have, the Russians did attack the um, this gas storage, but gas storage was attacked by Geran, not by missiles. Anyway, that was like the first signal from the Russian side, and the Russians were telling the Ukrainians, if you are not going to do something, then we will destroy and ruin your gas storage. And according to information we have, um, now the U European countries when they buy gas they have their own uh, gas storage facilities of course but uh, starting 2022 the european countries start using the ukrainian gas storage uh, to increase their let's say common european gas capacity gas storage capacity and now we see that uh, if the russians destroy of course this can lead to a significant increase of the price for of, of natural gas for europeans so we'll see what is going to be next uh, but uh, for now the situation as you can see is getting worse and worse now we are moving to Bakhmut Artemov's direction to the area of the most important updates that we received during the previous 24 hours. If you remember, during the previous day, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes, uh, very fierce battles, the Russians managed to establish complete control over the village by the name of Ivanovska. We have adjusted the map, most of the mappers uh, have adjusted the maps, and uh, later we got uh, additional updates about further Russian progress in the, in the direction of Chesovyar and and we discussed that, for example, Syriac updated his maps, uh, the Deep State updated their maps, and there are some Russian, uh, let's say, uh, sources updated their maps. But uh, by the morning, by by the morning of the 24th of March of the local time, we didn't have any evidence or any proofs that the Russians managed to do this. And later, right before we start making the video, we received the final geolocated confirmation of that Russian attack along the railways uh, from, let's say, Bogdanovka, Khromova, a new cemetery uh, and um, Popovo forest towards Chesovyar. On this video we can see uh, the work of 67 mechanized brigade. During that attack they were responsible for defending this area. As you can see the Russians were using significant number of armored personnel carriers. The carriers were, uh, were keeping some distance between each machine trying not to get under fire. As you can see just on this since we, have calcul we can calculate probably 5 or 6 uh, carriers. Some of them were damaged and some of them were stopped among the fields. Some of them continued offensive operation further the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking all the time during their movements and now this is the most important moment uh, at some point the Russians uh, le um, let's say entered some territory and uh, the landing operation started uh, the Russians start uh, capturing the positions along this tree line if we return back to map this is the area where the first Russian group landed this is it so the Russians were moving with a very difficult let's say roads something like this then here then here the one again here and then along the tree lines in this area and they landed their infantry here so that was like the first russian road and um, uh, as a result of uh, that this uh, this attack as we can see the russians managed to capture the territory the ukrainians start bombing the russians heavily with cluster runs with fpv drones dealing significant damage but uh, that was not the final point of the russians as you can see from the north from the top we see another personnel carrier who bypassed the russian position the that's the previous Russian position and continue moving further uh, on the bottom of the screen and when talking about the map uh, to the southeast uh, as you can see the carrier bypassed moved additional 500 meters and then another group of infantry landed in the area and the Ukrainians start bombing and attacking. It was a very interesting attack because uh, as you can see the Russians didn't stop. The Russian personnel carrier didn't stop. Uh, he just turned, it just turned around back, start moving back and the Russian soldiers started, um, let's say, leaving the personnel carrier while the carrier was moving. So it was very difficult operation obviously. And the final point of destination 
domination of the Russians were here. So the Russians uh, landed in this area and very likely captured this foothold. Uh, as you can see, most of the mappers, according very likely according to that video, updated their maps and they're showing that the Russians controlled something like this. Uh, this gray zone also included by most of the mappers in the territory of Russian control. But uh, for now, we decided not to change the area completely because it's very difficult to make a conclusion that as a result of just one attack, the Russians managed to capture all these three lines and trenches. Very unlikely it's possible. Um, but anyway, uh, the Russians, what the Russians uh, did during that attack. As you can see, the Russians were attacking along this tree line. And the main reason of that is that the Russians by that attack was trying not to capture the tree lines or fortifications. They were trying to cut the trenches and these strong calls from supply. So if Ukrainians ever wanted to send forces to this stronghold or to this stronghold, they were using uh, the forest and the railways as the main supply road. So they were moving their infantry along this area and then from this area they were enter trenches and they were trying to hold the fence in the trenches. So that's why the Russians, first of all, uh, cut by first attack, they cut uh, uh, these uh, trenches from supply and support by landing infantry in this area. And by second attack, the Russians did the same. They established the foothold and basically they cut the main Ukrainian forces who were located in those trenches from the mainland. After that, very likely uh, there were more attacks more attempts to attack by other russian groups and though um, the main purpose of the next groups were to clear the trenches and to establish complete control over the territory in front of chasavyar so the situation the operation was pretty successful the operation was published by the ukrainian sources and now the russians uh, are going to move further to the west in direction of seversky danes donbass canal and very likely due to the configuration of the front line the russians will try to improve their positions along the railway and they will enter residential area using these roads of attack so something like this is going to happen during the next few days furthermore obviously the russians will try to clear the forest uh, to the north and to get this line and to and after this after that the russians will be able to start offensive to bogdanovka let's say from behind so the attack towards this forest was very risky but the benefits now the russians have are very big first of all bogdanovka now is about to fall the Ukrainians now need to think what to do to counter attack or to start withdrawing and now the Russians can answer uh, Chasavyar from the east and from the northeast of this uh, short block that located on the Russian side of Seversky Donbass Donetsk Canal. So this is the situation in the area. When talking about Ivanovska, we haven't received anything about the area during the previous 24 hours. Very likely there are very heavy clashes. The Russians very likely continue advancing further to the west in direction of the same canal. But uh, we, for now we don't have any geolocations or updates about that progress. Very interesting details are coming from Klishevka area. The Russians, uh, after the Ukrainian defense collapsed in Ivanovska and collapsed in between Chasavyar and Popovo forest, the Russians renewed their offensive in the vicinity of Klishevka. On this video, we can also see Russian attempts to attack with significant number of armored vehicles. Uh, the Russians were using up to six, uh, let's say, as armored vehicles, including two, three tanks and uh, three, four personnel carriers. They were moving towards the a hill 215.7 from the north and as a result of that attack the forest uh, geolocation we managed to discover is this one so this uh, forest is under complete russian control and now as you can see according to geolocations the russians managed to half encircle a uh, klishevka from the north uh, from the northwest from the south and from the south um, east. So this is like the uh, semi-encirclement of Klishevka and uh, just recently the Russians established control over Alibastrova. So as I understand, uh, during the next two weeks, the Russians will establish complete control over Klishevka and they will force the Ukrainians to fall back. During the previous night, the Russians established complete control as well over the main supply roads that the Ukrainians were using to send their additional forces to uh, the fields in the vicinity of Klishevka and to Klishevka itself. Uh, the Russians destroyed 
destroyed significant number of ammo depots, uh, let's say artillery positions, uh, Ukrainian machine gun positions, FPV drone operator positions. So we see activity in the area. And furthermore, if we increase the numbers of updates, let's say since the beginning of March, then we're going to see that this is approximately one of the most important areas for the Russians just due to the number of geolocations we received. The Russians are trying to suppress the Ukrainian positions significantly in the area to the west of Kurdyumovka and in the vicinity of uh, Klishevka. So March was the, let's say, the months under the flag of Bakhmut Artemovsk direction. Now we are moving further to the north in direction of Seversk. The Russians also launched an offensive today, not like offensive, but the second day in a row, or not the second, probably fifth or sixth or seventh day in a row, the Russians are clearing this area with FPV drones. Uh, very soon, maybe day, maybe two, maybe three, the Russians will start the ground operation with the purpose to establish control over Fyodorovka and Razdolovka. A very concentrated area of Russian fire. Once again, if we increase the numbers of updates, we see Russian focus in the vicinity of Fyodorovka and of course the Russian focus in Razdolovka. The these two villages uh, ha have been reducing to ruins uh, since the beginning of March or maybe since the end of February. Severs direction we haven't received anything during the previous 24 hours probably for the first time uh, during the previous months uh, but uh, we got some geolocations from the Ukrainian side of how they were bombing and attacking the Russian abandoned armored vehicles and tanks. The results of Russian offensive that uh, um, uh, took place in March. Anyway, we see that the Russians decided to stop. To stop, to think uh, about the possible offensive operation once again, uh, they made a lot of attempts to storm Bilogorovka. Most of those uh, attacks were repelled by the Ukrainians. The Russians lost a significant number of armored vehicles and tanks on this direction during the previous two months. And now they need to do, uh, now they need just to think what to do next. Because if the Russians are able to bypass the southern, uh, let's say, um, flank, let's say, to establish control over Razdolovka, uh, Fyodorovka, Pirezhnya, which is very impossible because there are no, like, uh, barriers like the landfields and the uh, hates uh, from the Ukrainian side. And, uh, of course, uh, then it's very important to have additional progress on this flank. But for now, we see that uh, the Bilogorovka flank is um, not uh, working in timings. So they're, like, missing the timing. And to the west of uh, Seversk, the Russians, according to information we have, managed to discover another multiple launch rocket system. According to the author of this video, that was another vampire. Now it seems to me that uh, if the Russians destroy vampire, every single author says that that was destroyed another vampire of Czech production. Uh, when talking about South and Kupin's direction, we don't have anything new, nothing special, just additional progress on the ground, according to some Russian reliable sources. So the Russians once again answered this uh, foothold uh, but without any geolocation proof so let's wait a little bit more north in Kupin's direction the russians stopped any attempt to attack sinkovka uh, so and i don't see whether they're going to re renew their offensive in the very near future for now it's like complete let's say stop uh, without uh, any idea how to continue the battle for sinkovka or, or kupinsk now the russians decided not to to uh, to move their focus to some other area uh, Avdiyevka direction, we have additional uh, progress from the Russian side according to pro-Ukrainian mappers and according to neutral mappers, the Russians as a result of offensive managed to establish complete control over the fields between Semenovka and Berdychi. And now, as you can see, the village by the name of Semenovka is semi-encircled uh, from the southern beginning of the village till the northern. V very difficult um, to, uh, let's say, to tell for 100% sure that Ukrainians, the Russians are planning to start storming the area because Anyway, this is the water barrier that should be crossed by the Russians, but we can uh, say for 100% sure that Semenovka, if the Russians are not able to cross the river, will be reduced till ruins as a Kup, as a Krynki, as a Marinka, and anyway, the Ukrainians will be forced to fall back towards the next uh, defense belt, and we are talking about this line. And the Ukrainians then from this defense line will try to control the, let's say, the crossing of the river from the distance and to destroy the Russians who will try to to cross the area and to attack the uh, next Ukraine positions. Uh, uh, additional reports, uh, as we discussed, the Russians continue improvements according to different mappers of the fields between Severna, Toninka and Vadyana, for now without any geolocated proofs. 
Новомихайловка, Красногоровка. The Russians continue storming operation after few, after very bloody and fierce clashes for the southern part of the village. Either the Russians and the Ukrainians decided to fall back. Uh, the Russians return back to the southwestern part. The Ukrainians return back, uh, let's say, on the top of the railways. And now either the Russians and the Ukrainians are bombing and attacking the gray zone, uh, trying to reduce the movements of each other. On this video, we can see the bombings from the Russian side of the gray zone. Uh, very likely some reconnaissance teams, some sabotage groups, some Ukrainian positions, some Ukrainian soldiers were sent to this part and the Russians were bombing them. For now, it's very difficult to understand when exactly the Russians are planning to new offensive but for now there is operational pause uh georgievka now the russians are concentrated on the in three lines between Georgievka and Pobeda. Currently, this is the main defense belt of the Ukrainians. There's this. It's just. It's a very big trench, uh, trench uh, from Georgievka to Pobeda. Very long one, maybe a few kilometers. There are lots of Ukrainians with the different types of weapon. And now the Russians are just bombing and shelling the Ukrainians with the purpose to force them to fall back. And then they're gonna attack this territory. Uh, I'm talking about uh, this uh, square. This is the area of Russian concentration of artillery fire, and if we increase the numbers of this since the beginning of March, we can see how focused the Russians were just during March. Lots of strikes, lots of attacks. It's a part of clearing operation. Uh, the real ground operation is going to start also very soon. Nova Mikhailovka, we haven't received anything from direction. As we discussed, the Russians tried to clear, create a safe road from the south to the northwest, but the two tanks with demining equipment were damaged and destroyed by the Ukrainians, so the Russians uh, couldn't uh, cleared the area and after that uh, after the use of those tanks the Russians the Ukrainians reveal the Ukrainians FEV drone operators reveal their positions further to the north of Novomikhailovka and the Russians destroyed all positions then with artillery strikes probably the next few days the Russians will make more attempts uh, to attack and to clear the area with tanks and then uh, the final uh, stage of battle for Novomikhailovka is going to start to the west of Konstantinovka the Russians destroyed another artillery position uh, nothing from Vili Novoselov, Kvremivka tactical bridgehead and some additional updates were received from robots in the direction. According to information we have right before I start making the video, the uh, Ukrainian sources reported that the Russians managed to advance addition for another two kilometers to the northwest of Verbova, so the Russians continued the encirclement of Ukrainian forces that located between Verbova and Robotina. From the other side, we see lots of videos from Babry FPV drone operators. The Ukrainians tried to evacuate to bring some reinforcements, reserves but the Russians were destroying and attacking everything and um, let's say that also the days of Robotina are numbered and the battle for this uh, foothold also is coming to an illogical end when the Ukrainian forces will be forced to fall back and the Russians will restore their positions right to the south of N08 road. I don't know whether the Russians are going to move further to Arekhov, but uh, probably they're not going to. And that's it for today. The military summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.